Good morning. First of all, I would like to ask everyone to have your headsets. I'm the only one to speak Chinese. I come from China, Asia. Just now, Ad Minister Advezi quoted Fadi. He said, Internet belongs to everybody. I would say, Internet is for everybody, and everybody is for the Internet. I'm very delighted to attend the ICAM 50. On behalf of the Chinese government, I would like to extend a warm congratulations to the, to the conference. I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to Minister Advazi and ICANN for the praiseworthy efforts and con considerate arrangement they have made for this meeting. There is an English proverb, he that walks with wise men should be wise. That is why I came to I came to the UK for the second time in a year to the birthplace of the father of the World Wide Web. It is my hope that we can earnestly earn, learn from each other on experiences and wisdom in internet development and management. First of all, I would like to express our gratitude to ICANN for the support they have given to the development of China's Internet over the years. I would like to emphasize that the Chinese government supports the China Internet Network Information Center, CINIC, in carrying out more profound cooperation with ICANN and the Internet groups. This year, we will help the CNIC with its work in advancing IPv6 support by China's CCTLD, DNXSEC, and Chinese email, so as to push for China to build a next generation internet featuring security and credibility. China is a large country in terms of Internet use. We have been committed to building an open, safe, credible cyberspace that can meet the demand of the users. Nearly two decades ago, in the birthplace, in the birthplace of China's Internet, in Zhongguancun, Beijing, a huge billboard was erected with the words on it, how far away are Chinese people from the information expressway? Just head north for 1,500 meters. From then on, China embarked on its era of building and sharing cyber, cyberspace together with the rest of the world. And thanks to the network sharing, China's population exceeds 600 million 20 years later, or a quarter of the global total. And the Internet can be accessed in numerous homes throughout the country. Thanks to the network sharing, China boasts 1.2 billion mobile users, 500 million Weibo users, which is microblock users, and 500 million WeChat users, with more than 20 billion instant messages sent every day. People can communicate anywhere and anytime. Information is anytime and anywhere. Thanks to the network sharing, Four million websites have been launched in China. Surfing the Internet has become an indispensable way of life for Chinese people. No matter where and when 
you can learn the big news, buy quality products, and make friends around the world. Thanks to the internet sharing, the turnover of China's e-commerce has surpassed 1 trillion British pounds a year, which has contributed more than 10% of the country's economic growth and become the biggest growth engine for the economy. The case, is, the case is true for both China and the world at large. The Internet is, in a most profound way, changing people's lives, advancing social progress, spearhead, spearheading a country's development and charting a future of the world. As international exchange and cooperation on the Internet are going wider and deeper, we are more and more realizing that different national conditions, different historical and cultural backgrounds, and different levels of Internet development have led to different modes and methods in Internet management, and also divergences and controversies in the Internet governance. However, we share the same wish to strengthen cyberspace management. This is like the model of ICANN, one world, one Internet. Based on this common wish, we should seek common ground while leaving aside differences, enhance mutual understanding, and reach on a consensus on the following seven aspects. First, the Internet should benefit all mankind and bring well-being to the world's people instead of bringing harm. Second, the Internet should bring peace and security to all countries instead of becoming a tour for a country to attack another. Third, the Internet should be more concerned with the interests of developing countries because they are more in need of the development opportunities it brings. Fourth, the Internet should pay emphasis on the protection of citizens' legitimate rights instead of becoming a hotbed for law-breaking and criminal activities let alone becoming a tour for carrying out violent terrorist attacks. Fifth, the Internet should be civilized and credible instead of being full of rumors and fraud. Sixth, the Internet should spread positive energy and inherit and carry forward the outstanding culture of human beings. Seventh, the Internet should also be conducive to the healthy growth of juveniles because that concerns the future of the mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, in March this year, the U.S. government announced it will give up its control over ICANN. In April, different countries gathered in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and reached broad consensus on Internet governance, for which we would like to express our appreciation and welcome. That ushers in a new era of joint global Internet governance and opens a new historical chapter in the development of ICANN. Chinese President Xi Jinping has called for more bilateral and multilateral exchanges and cooperation in cyberspace affairs, and China will stick to openness and cooperation in working with other countries in a new era of joint governance of cyberspace. Ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu has a famous line, the man who acts according to Tao's rules will be favored by Tao. And I believe that with the joint efforts of international communities, the reform of ICANN internationalization was sure to be a complete success. I hope that the Internet governors will be like the weather in London, bright and shining. Thank you.